Kia ora. Um, my name is Tani Patterson and this is another instalment of my talk for Altogether Autism and Parent to Parent. Um, so previously I've spoken about language and autistic identity and this time I'll talk about sensory variations um, and which will lead into my next video about meltdowns and shutdowns and communication. Um, so sensory processing is not isolated to autism. Sensory processing can be an issue on its own. Um, so some of this, and alongside other things, so some of this may apply to people um, that aren't diagnosed with autism, but have sensory processing issues, ADHD, um, fibromyalgia, and more. So how many senses do we have? Okay, this is a really growing area of knowledge, um, and I recently saw an article that mentioned 25. However, for today, let's stick with eight. So, we have vision. We have hearing. <laughs> we have smell. And we have taste. And we also have vestibular, which is our sense of balance. Our proprioceptive sense, which is our sense of where our body is in space. And interoception, which is what is happening, our sense of what is happening internally. And I think the last three are really important ones to remember when we are thinking about how sensory um, perceptions affect a person. And they, they sometimes are missed, especially that last one, interoception. So have a look, have a chuck them into Google and if you're interested and see what you can find because it's really interesting. So. Differences in perception and processing of sensory input and output is a common cause of meltdowns and shutdowns. Sensory issues are massively overwhelming and because they are so unique to every individual person, they are quite difficult to get your head around. So it's worth taking the time to figure out what the person's sensory needs are um, and this may even reduce the frequency um, and severity of a meltdown or shutdown. Um, so knowing what my individual sensory needs are um, helps me to better regulate myself. So I have sound and vision and smell as my dominant no filter senses. Um, not to mention over empathizing which makes social interactions extremely tiring. Um, and I also find interoception that last one can be really confusing. Um, I have fibromyalgia, which I believe is a sensory processing glitch, but that's a whole other story. So one of my most happiest places is when I'm driving by myself in my car with my music cranked up super loud and I can control the sound, the temperature and feel in control of my environment. Um, things I do not love, clicking clocks, ticking clocks, humming fridges, background music while I'm having a conversation, um, and also chemical types of smells, especially perfumes, they give me nausea um, and dizziness and sometimes even migraines. So sensory diets can be very useful if someone's either hypo or hypersensitive. So please note people can be a cocktail of this. For example, um, some might require movement to feel grounded, so seek physicality, but react strongly to noise, which they will avoid. So there are many fantastic sensory stimulating and calming activities which are very beneficial. So things such as dancing, singing, drumming, meditation, yoga, martial arts, trampolining, um, midi midi or massage, and animal therapy. Um, so many people see the benefits of these activities, 
but they may not see them as therapy, but they are. So for stimulating and calming senses, especially the ones that are more physical in the origin, um, safe sensory stimulation or stimming can be really helpful. So stimming when non-injurious is one of the most important things that I do to feel comfortable, safe and to reduce my anxiety. Helps me to relax, communicate, reduce or alter sensory input or simply feel comfort. It can also be a hugely useful form of therapy, meltdown prevention and recovery. So I stim by rocking, touching my face or hair, um, rubbing fabric between my fingers. So stimming helps me to process things. There's my little dog, she also helps me to process things. Um, and it keeps my mind on track and it can even reduce my heart rate um, when I'm feeling overwhelmed. Um, and I find phone calls really difficult and I'll pace and it will keep me on track with the conversation and keep me present. Um, so look up sensory diets online and you'll find a bunch of helpful information to help guide you to put some ideas into practice. Um, there's also websites that sell stim toys which are really worth looking at or you can get creative and make your own. There are heaps of online resources. Um, so making a sensory kit to have on hand can be one of the most beneficial things that you can do to support someone with sensory differences. Kia ora.